Last season, we told you about deadly explosions at two B.C. sawmills. Four workers were killed, dozens more injured. Investigations uncovered conditions that may have been responsible for the explosions, but charges were never laid. That's why survivors and victims' families are launching a class action lawsuit. With an update on our story, here's Claude Adams. The explosion lit up the night sky over Prince George, a blast seen and heard for miles. It still echoes four years later when a group of survivors gather in Bruce German's living room. I'm failing to be a husband and a father to my family. I don't think I'll ever be the same again, and it just hurts inside. There's so much of me missing that I don't know where it is. They all have vivid, deeply etched memories. It's one of the hallmarks of PTSD. We were there at the epicenter. I, 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 I know what I saw. I know what I smelled. I smelled be burnt hair. I saw my buddy here who I thought wasn't going to make it, seeing flaps of skin hanging off his, his limbs. I saw his glasses look like they were melted to his head. Physically, they all survived the fire but they are changed men. Now they have filed a lawsuit against the provincial government and workers' compensation, known as WorkSafe BC, to acknowledge blame. WorkSafe is responsible for workplace safety in the province, and workers are not able to sue their employers. That right has been taken away from them, and we have in its place a regulatory scheme that has totally failed these individuals, and they are seeking justice on a broader scale. Bruce German was horribly burned, and he, like the others, has received compensation. But the money, they say, isn't the main issue of the lawsuit, which was launched earlier this year. We were given a process for accountability, so I, I think there needs to be accountability on WorkSafe, who basically left us in there to burn. They left us there. The Prince George Mill was obliterated, an explosion believed caused by a buildup of highly flammable wood dust. Sawmill explosions are rare, but what made the Lakeland blast so shocking is that it was the second in quick succession. Three months earlier, the Babine Mill in Burns Lake, 230 kilometers away, had blown up, killing two and injuring 20. I live it every night. Every day I live it. All workers should be protected by the company. If it's unsafe, they should uh, fix it. The government should step in and do more. WorkSafe had made a number of visits to each mill before the explosions. There were no um, regulatory actions taken with regard to the combustible dust. WorkSafe knew or ought to have known that combustible dust was a hazard. After the blasts, WorkSafe reinforced its mill inspections, but that's little consolation to the survivors of the 2012 explosions. A 2009 video by the U.S. Chemical Safety Board shows how dust explosions happen. Dust may accumulate on surfaces and lie undisturbed for years. Then some initial fire or explosion, known as a primary event, shakes it loose and ignites it. A layer of dust as thin as a dime can cause an explosion if it's dispersed. According to subsequent investigations, that's likely what happened at both the BC mills in 2012. In our original story, a union leader said dust was a known phenomenon. Everybody in the sawmilling industry uh, understood that from time to time there would be fires uh, caused by dust. It's believed that some of the lumber in the mills was infected by the mountain pine beetle an insect that has been killing BC trees in great numbers since 2005. The trees were dying, but they still had commercial value, so forestry companies bought the lumber cheaply and processed the wood as quickly as possible. There was a real effort to try to get the stuff out the door, there's no question. The wood dust produced is very dry, and when it accumulates in the air, it can be ignited. This material was dry as a bone, and it burns like you wouldn't believe. In our earlier investigation, workplace safety expert Neil McManus told 16 by 9 that mill owners should have been alert to the problem of dust. The irony that, that comes out of this is that there have been fires 
many fires involving sawmills and the forest industry. But nobody seemed to take that and put it all together and say, wait a minute, we got a problem here until this. The sawmill owners say they're not at fault, as they relied on the judgment of the government inspectors who did not warn them about the risk of dust explosions. The owners were fined, and those fines are under appeal. No charges were laid. The government failed to prevent a catastrophic explosion and then failed to prevent a second one. And on top of that, failed to properly investigate the explosions. The lawsuit alleges negligent inspection of the mills and that the investigations were also conducted negligently, leaving the workers with severe physical and psychiatric injuries. WorkSafe has not responded to the charges and nothing has been proved in court. The agency would not talk to 16 by 9. I want all my injuries that I know I suffer to be acknowledged, not to be swept underneath and say, okay, it's been this amount of time, you should be over though, you know? That's not the way it goes. I kind of look at my life as uh, that it's been so torn down and I don't have the, the resources or the, the know-how to, to try and put it back together. Two of the survivors agreed to take 16 by 9 to what they call the scene of the crime, the new Lakeland Mill. It was an exercise in confronting the past. Well, even just going back now, I could feel the anxiety. Yeah, I can. Yeah, just knowing that. Even though I've driven past there in the past and stuff like that, it's always the same kind of feeling when it's... Never you, you, you do look, but you don't, you don't want to look because it's just... I don't yeah. know, it's just, it's hard to look at it, really. That's the mill there, yeah. Just try to take some deep breaths. Yeah, that's... I just wish our lives were as easily to rebuild as the, they were to rebuild the mill. I wish they put some effort into rebuilding our lives. Some can't understand why we can't get over it. Like it should be, just be easy to just get over it. And it's, they, they just don't understand how, how it's embedded in the brain, right? In nearby Burns Lake, the Babine Mill has also been rebuilt, and it's operating. But Ken Michel, who was severely injured in the blast, is struggling to rebuild his life. Bounded by a wheelchair and a small house since the accident four years ago. It's not the same no more. Like my wife is not really my wife now. She's more like a nurse to me. As with the Lakeland Mill survivors, Ken's trauma replays itself over and over again. He's covered in scar tissue, and the memories won't go away. Fire just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, just burning, burning, and trying to bat the fire away like this. And I was walking around in the flames, fire coming off my arms, my body. In my mind, I thought that uh, maybe I might be disfigured. No matter what, I'm going to try and make it out. Life has become a personal battle with neurotrauma. The brain injuries that the survivors say have altered their lives. I can't do public things anymore. My daughter, <laughs> her birthday, just not too long ago, I couldn't go with them downtown. And that hurts but I still try, but I'm not able to do those things anymore. I don't trust people enough to tell my son to go get a job. He's 20, he's 20 something years old and I'm not willing to say, go out there and get a job because I don't want to send him off to die. What's our lives worth? It's not money. I don't want the money, I want my life.
Coming up later this season on 16 by 9, sleep is supposed to be free, and yet it is becoming big business. There are new classes of drugs, devices to help you breathe at night, and long wait lists for sleep lab tests. So what's behind it? And what happens if you don't get the rest you need? People just thought sleep is a period of time when really not much happened. Sleep medicine is probably one of the most rapidly growing areas of medicine. The new age of sleep. Some sleep times are clinically proven. They call my institute Taj Mahal of the sleeping. If you don't sleep, there is harmful effects on every cell that you have in your body. Increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, dementia. You stop breathing 43 times per hour. Really? We hope you'll join us for that story later this season on 16 by 9. In the meantime, that is our broadcast for tonight. A reminder, you can always connect with us on Facebook and Twitter or at globalnews.ca slash 16 by 9. I'm Donna Friesen. From all of us here at 16 by 9, thanks for watching.